Uh, we've had two so far. The series is called The Journey, presented by the Center for Religious Debate. Uh, the first debate today was Creation versus Evolution, followed by The God of the Bible, Is He the Creator of the Universe? And for our final debate of the day, the question will be, is Jesus the only way to a meaningful and peaceful encounter with God after this life? Or is he only one of many ways? Uh, Farhan Qureshi will be arguing that he is one of many ways, and Lewis will be <coughs> arguing for the point that Jesus is the only way. Uh, you've been introduced to Mr. Qureshi uh, in the first two debates. Lewis is an open-air preacher and an apologist. He's a student of world religions, including Islam uh, and other worldviews, atheism, agnosticism. Uh, you can visit his website at truthdefenders.com. The format for the debate will be the same as the other two. We'll begin with each side giving a 20-minute opening statement, followed by 10-minute rebuttal by each side. Then we'll have a period of cross-examination where each debater will question the other for 15 minutes each. And then we'll close with a five-minute concluding statement from each side. And Mr. Qureshi will be starting this time, and he will have his opening 20 minutes <coughs> right now. Thank you, and peace and love to everybody in the room. Uh, round three, ladies and gentlemen. Um, all right, uh, to quickly introduce myself, I think I think he said that I'm, I'm a person of many uh, views, which is true. I think all of us have a lot of different views about a lot of different topics, and there's different ways to break down our views. Um, but I think he said that I was an atheist, and that's not true. I'm an agnostic, and more specifically, I'm an agnostic theist. And I'll define my, my, my view uh, um, a little bit right now. I happen to attend a Unitarian Universalism congregation, um, which is a congregation that includes humanists, uh, atheists, agnostics, and theists alike. Um, and, and there's Christians that go to this church too. It's not a Christian church. Uh, again, if there's atheists and agnostics going to it, it's generally not a Christian church. Although there are Christians who believe in universal salvation, uh, who do attend the church as well. And, um, and, it, it's, and humanism is, of course, uh, celebrating our humanity and our diversity and our plurality and the social justice that, 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 that we should be empowering. And so when people hear Unitarian Universalism congregation, normally it, it, the, the, the debate between Unitarianism and Trinitarian pops up. It has nothing to do with that theological discourse within Christianity. So I wanted to point that out. Um, now I, I meditate and I study Eastern spirituality as well. I'm spiritual not dogmatic. Uh, I am a former Muslim, a, a truth seeker, a free thinker, an agnostic theist, a relativist, a mystic, an eclectic, a skeptic, a rationalist, and an empiricist. So those are a lot of different worldviews that deal with a lot of different things. And it's because I've chosen to think about these things that, uh, that, um, that I can call myself these things. But I prefer no labels at all. As a matter of fact, I want to get away from labels and think more deeply about what it is that, that, that I believe. But So allow me to, to, to define some of these terms. Universalism is the notion that spirituality, discipline, morality, transformation, higher consciousness or expanded awareness, and salvation from suffering are available to everyone regardless of what they believe or conceptualize using mental gymnastics. Any methodology that gets you to these types of things is the whole idea behind universalism. Universalism does not posit that two contradictory religions or perspectives are equally true. I want to repeat that. Universalism does not posit that two contradictory religions or per perspectives are equally true. Rather, the contradictory dogmas are not important at all. The spiritual connection and transformation that one derives from any religion is what matters and happens to be equally accessible 
through multiple avenues. Agnosticism is the position of not knowing, and from this premise of not knowing, being open to the possibilities, because if you don't know something, and you're able to humbly admit that you don't know, you become open to the possibilities in terms of imagination. So being open to the possibilities allows imagination. My theism is the use of my imagination. When I pause or think about the possibility of some kind of transcendental reality, I am purely basing it on imagination. At the end of the day, I don't pretend to know what the ultimate reality behind our existence is, what happens to us when we die, or what God could possibly encompass. And I think that this rings true for all religious people. None of us know what God is, and this is an epistemological question versus an ontological question. Does God exist is an epistemological question pertaining to knowledge. Ontological question is, what is God? And Christian theologians the world over admit that no, none of us know what God is or what the nature of God is and that the nature of God is in fact a mystery. So eclecticism, I said that I'm an eclectic, and this, what this means is this is the position of benefiting from multiple sources of knowledge and insight. Wherever there is knowledge, I will go and pursue that knowledge and think about that knowledge. Um, <clears throat> skepticism means to go where the evidence leads you and to be weary of truth claims. A lot of people have truth claims that are out there but no evidence to back it up. And if there's no evidence to back it up, how can we claim absolutely that something is true? And so skepticism is in place uh, for us to go where the evidence leads us and, and not just make an absolute trick truth claim without substantial evidence. Now mysticism is the focus of direct experiences. And people hear the word mystical or mysticism and they start thinking something magical or something pertaining to witchcraft or something. It has nothing to do with any of that. Mysticism is the direct experience of life, reality, and existence. And to the mystic, the direct experience of God. Mysticism is an epistemological approach. Epistemology is the study of knowledge and how we know what we, uh, how we, how we know what we know and to decipher knowledge from belief. So epistemology, what it does, it's, it's a branch in philosophy where we decipher or distinguish or differentiate what we know from what we believe. We can have several beliefs. I believe a lot of things, but that's not the same thing as knowing. And so when we decipher or distinguish what we know from what we believe, um, we open ourselves up to truth. So the argument is that uh, we cannot know real what reality is purely through concepts, uh, which is philosophy, and mechanisms, which is science, alone. So I don't believe that life can be explained by a set, set of mechanisms. What is science? Science is a description of how things work. Science is a description of the mechanisms that bring about the reality that we are experiencing. So when we talk about biology, physics, and chemistry, we're talking about the mechanisms that make us who we are, what we are, and why the things that are going on are, are, are actually going on. So we talk about physics, we're talking about constants, we're talking about cosmology, we're talking about outer space, we're talking about the planet, we're talking about gravity. We're, we're talking about specifically how these things happen. We're talking about biology, we're talking about cells, we're talking about uh, the, 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 the different organs and, and systems that we have in our body. So these are mechanisms that bring about the reality that we're experiencing. But science is absolutely limited in what information it can provide to us. And same thing with philosophy, it's the conceptualization of reality. So we do mental gymnastics, how we can use deductive and reasoning to make sense of things. And philosophy is limited to human mental gymnastics. It cannot go outside of its scope. And so let's think about science and philosophy just for a moment. So if I tell you that love is a neurotransmitter in the brain, this is what science would tell us. Love is a neurotransmitter in the brain, oxytocin. And so when oxytocin occurs in our brains, this is what brings about love, how something works. So neurologists and neuroscientists are able to pinpoint the physical aspect of the brain, which is called a neurotransmitter. But that's what science is limited to. When we talk about philosophy, we're talking about the definition of love. And I can give an outstanding definition of love. 
I can articulate like what love is, what the different types of love is, what what it what it means to 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 to, to be in love. These are things that like, using philosophy and words and symbols and languages I can describe to you. But guess what? Neither one of those things do justice to love because there's a third component, the direct experience of love. Love is not just a neurotransmitter in the brain. Love is not just something that I can explain with words. It's a feeling and it's a, in, in a qualitative experience that we're having. And hence comes the third method to know, the third way to know. Science is a way to know, philosophy of rationalism is a way to know, deductive reasoning, and mysticism, or the direct experience of something, is the third way to know. And these things, again, are universal in terms of science, objective science, we can universally, and people from all over the world, different belief systems, can come empirically test the same things. Philosophy, we can do mental gymnastics and define things in different languages and different cultures in a similar way. And mysticism is more subjective, but it is a direct experience of love, a direct experience of God. And so a, a person in India can experience divinity no different than a person who is following this particular. So if, if I'm a Christian and I'm using the methods and the belief systems to experience God, then that's possible within a Christian framework. And I would argue that a person can practice, use other methods, for example, Hinduism or Buddhism, to come to, to the experience of God. And this is what universalism entails. Our experience of love is universal. A Hindu experience is love. A Christian experience is love. And what I believe is that God is love. And so when we are experiencing love for one another, or for our mother, or for our wives, or for our, our children, or for humanity, or for our pets, that experience of love is in fact an experience of divinity itself. We are directly experiencing God as we experience the emotion of love. And so that's what mysticism entails. And so the experience of human expression, the experience of human interaction, the experience of music, the experience of laughter, the experience of intimacy, the experience of ecstasy, the experience of love, the experience of technology, using this booth or that camera. All of these are experiences that transcend what science and philosophy can dictate to us. And they are universal to all human beings. So rather than depending on what was revealed to Jesus or Muhammad or in the Bible or in the Quran or to someone else, one should be asking, what is reality, existence, life, God, using all of these words interchangeably, revealing to you? Now there are certain mystical or all experiences that can open up the imagination. When we're talking about mystical experiences, for example, I saw an angel, or I saw this, or, or, or I saw some type of vision. And though those types of mystical experiences mystics talk about as well, and they open up the imagination to, dip, to, to infinite possibilities. The reality of the situation is people from all cultures and all religions experience these visions. It experience different um, beings of love, experience different uh, beings of the different energies of compassion. And we hear about the narratives from different cultures and traditions talking about the, the, their, their mystical or all experiences of, um, uh, of these di different beings of compassion and love. And so this is a, something that occurs across cultures and religions. And so rationalism and, and empiricism, philosophy and science, again, has specifically to do with the objective physical world and very little to do with possible transcendent or metaphysical realities. Rationalism is the use of inductive and deductive reasoning to make sense of things. Uh, empiricism is the use of the scientific method to make observations and measurements about the physical universe. So given that science and philosophy are not the only way to know, and mysticism is the third way to know, I would argue that it is your personal, direct experience of God and what God reveals to you that really matters. You are living a narrative. You are living a life right now. And you are having experiences. You have family members who are suffering. You have drama to worry about at work. You have, you have death to face. You have illness to face. You have pain to face. 